Yeah, so I kind of hate how this area has the uh, same, like, music as the Hottie Clinic, because I don't have positive associations of that. But it's also kind of like the funny, haha, eccentric character theme. Uh, I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure we had it for like um, the ventriloquist at Big Berry Circus. So it's, that's giving me throwbacks to that. But yeah, this is fucking Hadi Clinic. So it's a throwback to the second game, um, at least musically. So yeah, you, you know, this dude's obviously your uh, employee, right? Yep. He was a top programmer. I would even say he was a genius. But he did suffer from one or two bugs in his personality. The way she does that pose is like exactly like... I'm not sure what it is, but I think it's an Undertale character, honestly. I wouldn't be surprised if there was an Undertale character directly inspired by her. He was a bit of a loser. Oh, you mean an incel? <laughs> That's what got him into trouble. What's the matter? He was a top programmer. Yeah, you said that already. You're glitching in your dialogue. He was no no trouble at all. A model employee. Uh, you said something about him being in trouble, bro. You're you're literally glitching. You're an NPC, dude. Get over it. About Mr. Elg, was he in some kind of trouble? I'm sorry. What would you think that? I thought you said something about it just now. You said he got himself into trouble because he was a bit of a loser. Kajonk, kajonk, kajonk. Three? Well, Mr. Armstrong had. No, 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 no. Viola had four. And you have three. Okay, cool. Good to know. Uh, I think at this point we're gonna go back to. Why isn't. Why isn't our favorite pink-wearing, cross-dressing chef here? Oh, is he in here? Looks like Mr. Armstrong's out again, but the place is open for business. Can't have an open restaurant without a chef. Hey, it's not my fault, Nick. Oh, Maya. Only a couple of minutes after the incident happened. Mr. Kudo left the scene, leaving Mr. Armstrong here alone. Arg. Missing one, we need to talk to him the most. Maybe he's trying to avoid us on purpose. Okay. It would seem that way. No. We're not talk. we- get- get away. Uh... Do we have to do, uh, Viola's thing now, or, or am I still missing something? Uh, apparently, I was needed to go here. Oh, Mr. Wright. Hello, Maggie. So they finished questioning you. Wasn't it just unbelievable in court today, sir? I'm gonna stay up all night and blog about everything that ha- <laughs> Okay, you didn't strike me as the blogging type, but cool. Weren't you scared? It was pretty touch and go in there. Yeah, but you totally nailed that old man. Hey, wait a second. I'm not into that. Uh, he was all over the place with his testimony. He's not the only one. Oh, she means gumshoe? Everyone else's testimony doesn't match up either. Well, we only had two testimonies, gumshoe and kudo. She's the one misremembering things? Oh, we're getting the sad music? Well, I'd be sad too if I was in, on trial for a murder I didn't commit. Maggie, you know how you said that everyone else provided testimony that doesn't match up with what you remember? Yep, there are just so many things that doesn't see. Also, how is she able to blog all night in, from a detention center? Like, how, what level of security do they take away her electronics? You know. The biggest contradiction. Like, right! Right! I'm sure it was him. But didn't Mr. Kudo testify earlier today that it was the waitress who put some white powder into the coffee cup? So you really think it was this disappearing man that did it? Well, he's not the only thing that disappeared. The CD vanished as well. You know, the CD with the writing on it. Oh yeah, the MC Screwdriver album, right? MC Bomber, Maya. They never did find that CD at the crime scene, sir. Or the victim's medication. That's gone missing, too. 
Ouch, my head. Okay. You said that you passed out when the victim Glen Elg collapsed, right? Yes, it's so embarrassing. I mean, I used to be a cop. When I came to, the restaurant was buzzing with police. And before I knew what was going on, they arrested me, sir. Wouldn't they know that you were a former police officer? I don't know. It just seems weird. You have no idea what went on at Trebian. No, no idea at all. Nah. The other witness, the old man from the park, was pretty much chased out of the picture. So, we have one absent witness and one unconscious witness. So basically, zero witnesses. You don't think... I think it's possible. He's definitely... It definitely has to do with his loans. He owes a debt to that debt company. Oh, gosh. Grr, it's like the master biting. <laughs> master, wait, what? Master biting the paw of the dog that it feeds. Are you sure about this, Mr. Wright? Well, the old man said as much when we spoke with him earlier. I don't know, the things that that man says don't add up for some reason, sir. Maggie looks like she, she does. She's got that pouty, like, hmm, face. Maybe we should ask Maggie exactly what she knows about old CD. If we have to. Yo, was this guy staring at your ass the whole time? A courtroom proceedings addict? What, do you fall asleep to Judge, judge Judy? I couldn't decide whether to say Judge Judy or Judge Steve Harvey, because I thought Judge Steve Harvey would be funnier, but then I doubted myself for a second. It feels like forever since I saw a witness as slippery as that old man. He's not really that bad of an old man, though. No. He's just annoying. I feel a bit uneasy. Ugh, it's past midnight and I should be in bed, but I'm recording this. If there's something on your mind, you've got to tell us. Especially if it has anything to do with Mr. Kudo or his testimony. I'm sorry about my chair being loud and creaky and a wooden chair. Roger, I'll spill it and see what you make of it. Okay, spill the beans. Is there anything about Mr. Kudo's testimony that stood out as odd to you? Yes. The fact that he was testifying to begin with doesn't quite... Doesn't quite what? Well, when I took the coffee over to the victim's table... Oh, we get a full body shot. Uh, not really. But, you know, torso. Uh, we know that already. It was Victor Kudo. But I can't really say it was an old man. Okay, then... How about calling him a really old, middle-aged man? No, age isn't the issue. The other customer was a woman. Are you sure, Maggie? So, Viola? We've only had two women involved in this case. Three. The robot lady, Viola, and uh, Maggie. So it's either uh, Viola or Lisa. Yeah, it's Viola, definitely. Absolutely. Can we present... Would she recognize her profile if we presented it? I know I used... Oh, okay. Holy smokes, that's him! Huh? That's your phony, mister, right? Just look at that ridiculous suntan. Uh, for the record, I'm not sunburned like an overdried tomato, so I don't know how... He told me... Oh, okay. I thought, like, he had dyed his skin, like, red like a tiger, but... I guess it's just a very exaggerated, like, Donald Trump tan, you know? I'm not hearing this. Yeah, there's no way that that's real. Uh... Nothing. How about the loan contract? Yeah, no. Uh, how about... Oh! Oh yeah, I've got something you're gonna love. A lunchbox just for you. Made with love. 
Weenies, too. I can't believe it. Thank you, sir. Nah, it was Detective Gumshoe. Who else would make such a nice lunchbox for you? Detective Gumshoe, he's got a huge cru- I mean, he's really worried about you. Looks like he put a lot of effort- <laughs> I can't accept it. Det <laughs> Detention center rules. No gifts allowed, sir. Maggie, you must be hungry. Yeah. Jeez. And anyway, you hate weenies? That's not what you said five seconds ago. It's all yours, Maya. You can enjoy it with Mr. Wright. I mean, you're making me hungry. But. My butt. <laughs> Gumshoe's lunchbox eaten with Maya. I think that's the first time the Phoenix Wright game has t told me when uh, a thing has been eaten with a piece of dialogue. Well, how was it? That hit the spot. I love weenies. And I love rice. I do. I genuinely do love rice. Um, especially white rice. Sticky rice. Uh... Okay, hold on. Don't hate me. I'm gonna peek at the walkthrough for five seconds. Okay, be right back. Okay, hold on. I think we missed this. Present Victor's testimony to Maggie. Ah. Uh, oh. Huh? You already said all this. Okay, never mind. Uh, okay. So is Gumshoe? Yeah, Gumshoe's gonna be here. Why the heck isn't the press conference set up yet? The superintendent's here already. Yeah, and there's a problem with the internet, too. I already told you to stop looking at porn. I mean, I'm watching videos online. I'm catching up on my Asian porn. I mean, soap operas. It's gonna have to wait, Chief. I'm throwing the switch. No, just when some young guy was a... <laughs> Shut up. Wow, this place is really buzzing. Something must be going going down. Something really big. Huh? What are you doing here, pal? Detective Gummy! You can't be here right now. I'm, I'm like, I'm eating edibles, man. So, these gummies, they're really powerful. Edibles, man. Man. <laughs> I'm a lemon, man. A vi oh, no. A computer virus? It's a, a computer virus. Really? It's a computer virus. God diddly. Okay, so present something. Apparently everyone's listening to this show now. That's because everyone wants money. They say that the victim, Glenn Elg, was really into gambling. Yep, you can't beat gambling. I won f uh, we saw this dialogue already. Uh... Maggie's probably crying all alone right now. Yeah, thanks to you. Ark, I'm sorry, I'm so sorry. Don't break his heart like that. That's <laughs> creme brulee. No, I'm just, I'm not, y y it's okay, dude, you are. Yeah, you're way too pl- oh. Are you kidding me? Maggie's like the plainest girl I've seen in this the, these games. Never mind. Um, present... Violetta. That's the girl who works over at Tender Lender. You want to stay away from her, okay? I mean it. I know, dude, but I can't help it. That should be the least of your worries, pal. Her name's... Oh, Cadaverini. Cadaverini, really? Oh my god! Oh, that looks like Dogen from Investigations 2, except it's not. She She's the only granddaughter of Bruto Cada Cadaverini. Bruto Cadaverini. Do you know who that, that is, Nick? Well, he looks like bad news to me. Bruto Cadaverini is the boss of the Cadaverini family. The Cadaverinis? That's one scary-sounding name. We can't touch them. They're way too powerful for the police. But you're th thinking of taking them on, aren't you? 
No, I don't remember ever saying I was going to. I better get some more info out of uh, info. Okay. I'm not sure if I really want to get involved in this, but who are the Cadaverinis? Who are they? A scary bunch of motherfuckers, that's who. You're a cop and you're scared? What's that about? Trust me, it doesn't matter if you're a kid or a cop. These guys are scary. They've got some serious clout in the criminal underworld. We can't touch them. They've got too much moolah. Uh, as in money. <laughs> they pretty much control all the cash on the city's black market. The black market, huh? And that includes Tender Lender, I take it. Sure, no one stands up to Bruto Cadaverini. And I mean no one. Interesting. So Viola's the granddaughter of some mafia boss then, right? Yeah, and everyone knows how much Bruto loves his little girl. She means everything to him. So, how'd she end up at Tender Lender? I don't know, pal. But I heard she and the boss of Tender Lender are pretty tight. Tight? Tight! Yeah, they're lovers, maybe. Sounds like a pretty important clue. So what exactly... <laughs> really? I don't know. Look, I just go with the flow, all right, pal? I thought detectives were supposed to be somewhat knowledgeable. What's with that face, pal? You think you know what a virus is? It's a malicious software that hijacks your computer. It's malicious software. He didn't even... He didn't... They're, like, calling him a Dr. Wright because he said he knew what it meant. He didn't even have to explain. It's not even genuine. I don't know. What's a virus? A virus is a program that... Okay, here we go. A virus is a program that gets inside a computer and causes damage. Damage? You mean it make, makes the machine go boom and explode? Well, it can, but not necessarily. It, it locks up the hardware so that you can't use it. Imagine all the case data you've got stored on your PCs here in the station. A virus could wipe out all that. Yeah. It deletes files. Or holds them ransom, you know, depending on the, yeah. Or what's even more scary is that viruses are infectious. Infectious? Most computers are connected together on a network, right? A virus can move from one machine to another over the network, so the virus just keeps spreading faster and faster. Just like a real virus. But Nick, why would anyone want to make a program like that? Yeah, it takes ages to type in all that data. Why would you want to destroy it, pal? No. People don't infect their own machines. They send the virus to someone else's. That's horrible. Oh, I get it. It's like you sneezing on Mr. Godot so he catches a cold. Then he wouldn't be able to turn up in court because he'd be too sick. You really shouldn't... <laughs> Shut up. What? 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 Anyway, that's what a virus is. It's bad. And the vi viruses have names, right? Yeah, you know, like Bonzi Buddy. Um, there's that one virus that's like, I love you. There's ransomware. There's Trojan viruses. Oh, the name. Wait, what do you mean the name of the virus? You've heard it before? Wait. The name scribbled on that sports paper and written on that CD. Oh, I thought I was getting just throwaway dialogue. That's the name of the virus, MC Bomber. Oh, it wasn't a music CD. It wasn't a music CD. It was a CD-ROM. It all makes sense now. I was like, he's not a musician. He's a programmer. They were ta handing over some CD. Okay, okay, that's actually really clever. Yeah, we already knew about the MC Blomer virus from a while back. A group of criminals issued a series of demands to the head haunches of law enforcement. They threatened to release the virus if their demands weren't met. Who are they? 
I don't know, some hot shots from the criminal underworld would be my guess. And now the virus has been released, huh? Yeah, it's in every computer and every public- Oh, jeez. Everyone's going nuts. So it really is bad. It's like the I love you virus. If you don't know about the I love you virus, that's, that's a pretty scary fucking virus. Look it up on Wikipedia. Yeah, it feels like we're in like, um... What's that Canadian dude? A Cronenberg. It feels like we're in a Cronenberg movie. Focus right now is on tracing the root of this virus on the black market. You mean- What? Oh. Jeez. <laughs> the timing of that could not have been more perfect. I literally got a McAfee alert that it, a pop-up ad was taking me to a suspicious website as we're talking about- as we're talking about- Oh, I need to go to sleep. Oh, I'm delirious. Oh my god, I'm laughing way too much at everything. Oh, that's why I like doing... Uh, oh my god, I can't even form a sentence anymore. Yeah, and because this one's so powerful, they're estimating its price tag was in the millions of dollars, pal. Jeez. Arg! I can't believe it! I almost forgot the most important thing! You know, the lunchbox. How did it... <sighs> Poor guy. Uh... It was delicious. Uh... <laughs> I made a jumbo lunchbox. Do me a favor again, huh, pal, and deliver this? Oh my god. Oh my god. Weenies again? Well, I'm sure there's... <laughs> that one little word again is one of the funniest things I've seen in this whole damn game so far. It's so good. I really can't eat anymore. <laughs> Okay, well, on that note, I will see you guys in the next episode of Trials and Tribulations.